This is a new version of video 5.4 for grade 6 math about solving proportions and using equivalent ratios. A proportion is a statement that two given ratios are equal to each other, and it's an equivalent ratio that is found by multiplying or dividing. When we multiply, we scale it up, and when we divide, we scale it down, and I'll show you. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers. So if we have a and b for our numbers, they can be written as a fraction a over b. If we had 1 and 2, we could put 1 over 2 and have a half, couldn't we? So the equation 10 twelfths equals 5 6 is a proportion because we can multiply the 5 times a 2 and the 6 times a 2, the same number, and get 10 twelfths. We can also divide 10 by 2 and 12 by the 2, the same number, and get 5 6. And this equation, 14 21st is equal to 22 33rds, is a proportion because we can multiply 14 times 33, coming across this way, we'll get 462, and we can multiply 21 times 22 going across this way and get 462, and they're equivalent, so they're in proportion. If we have A over B and C over D, they're equal to each other if we multiply A times D and B times C, and we get the same amount. That's cross products. If we have 1 times 6, well that equals 6, and 2 times 3, that equals 6. So these two fractions are in proportion to each other because they're equivalent to each other. All right? They equal the same thing when we do cross products. So Bob eats three pancakes every 12 hours. How many pancakes will he eat in 36 hours? So three pancakes in 12 hours is going to equal how many pancakes in 36 hours? So we need to scale up because this is a bigger number. It's going up, isn't it? And 12, what's going to happen to 12 to become a 36? We're going to multiply it by 3, right? That means we have to multiply the pancakes by 3. So we're going to get a 9 there. We're going to have a 3 here because they need to be multiplied by the same number, just like we did here or divided by the same number, but we're multiplying, so they're both going to get multiplied by 3, and that's going to give us a 9. We can also do cross products. We can say 3 times 36, which is 108, equals 12 times something that equals 108. Well, 12 times 9 equals 108, so we do know 9 goes there. See? We can even make a table. This is how many pancakes he eats, and this is how many hours. We're counting by 3's here, and we're counting by 12's here. 3 times 1 is 3, 12 times 1 is 12, 3 times 2 is 6, 12 times 2 is 24, see, times 3, times 4, times 5, see. So there's a few ways we can do this. We can use a common denominator to show proportion. So if we have 4 fifths and it equals some number over 15, what did what happened to the 5 to become a 15? It was multiplied by 3. The 4 got jealous. It got multiplied by 3. It became 12 fifteenths, and we scaled up. Another way is we can use the numerator to show proportion. What do we divide 18 by to get the 6? A 3. So the 12 wants to be divided by 3. So we have 6 fourths. And we can use cross products to show proportion. We can do 5 times 9, which is 45, it has to equal 45 times something. Well, that would be a 1, so n must equal 1. a and d, these values here are called the extremes, and b and c are called the means. And the equality of ratio states that two ratios are equal if and only if the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. See? just like we did over here. The extremes will equal the means, see? The six will equal the six. So basically what's happening is, like, look at it if we had two triangles, and we knew that the bottom here was a three feet, three foot length, and this is a four foot length, and the one next to it was scaled up to a larger version of it, and that became six feet, what would that side be? Well, if it went from three feet to six feet, it doubled, didn't it? So that 4 feet would have to double. We multiply both by 2 to get a ratio that's in proportion. 
We'd have 8, 6. We know n is equal to 8. We know that side's got to be 8, doesn't it? And the 6 is a multiple of 3, so we know 6 is a common denominator. All right? So we're going to talk more about this when you get to 7th grade in Chapter 4. And I'll have links in this video's description to help you if you want to click on those and learn some more about ratios and proportions. All right? I hope this was helpful, and I hope it was better than the first version. So, good luck, and I believe you can do this, and I'll see you next time. Bye.